oh yes, another charging video. Yeah, but this time is the charging video you've been waiting for, which is the standard range plus after the 170 kilowatt update. Oh yes. So uh, let's roll the tape, shall we? Now you see that uh, I had to get there with a pretty warm battery. Uh, it's somewhat hard to get almost 38 degrees Celsius. Most of the time you will arrive with about 35 degrees Celsius, which is good enough. And you see, if the battery is warm enough, you will get 170 kilowatt, but only briefly. You, you should try to arrive with about 5%, uh, but less than 10%. Then you will get it. That's it. <laughs> for, for I don't know how many percent you got it. Uh, and then it kind of slowly throttles, but it's still pretty good speed. See, uh, compared to other cars in this class, we have to compare it to, um, for example, uh, e Nero, e Soul, or maybe the newest Leaf. And they cost about the same as uh, at the standard range plus. So it still charges pretty damn good, despite that it throttles uh, a little bit earlier. And you know, the reason why it shows a very high charging speed in a kilometer per hour is because this car is so efficient. So, can you imagine, let's say, an Ionic charging at 135 kilowatt, you know? It would get insanely good uh, range per hour. So now uh, I tried to scroll through the, um, the app, but it seems like uh, the cell temp mid is stuck a little bit. So uh, I don't know what the heck is wrong with that one. Um, yeah, I, I use uh, my own phone, but I use a different um, uh, dongle. So maybe the one I use is a, an OBD LX, which is supposed to be pretty good. But okay, uh, so yeah, that, there you go. Now suddenly it updates. So it's, you see, it's 45 degrees Celsius in the battery. So for you guys who think that, oh, you know, it throttles because it's too hot. No, it throttles because it's too cold in most cases. So I learned about, I recently found out about this, that, you know, Tesla, the way Tesla, does it is that they heat up the battery at least for model 3 they heat it up <laughs> it wants to be over 50 degrees 50 57 or 58 degrees Celsius is what I've seen uh, in order to safely fast charge at high speed at high state of charge and you know we've seen it before that with um, for example uh, Kona or Eniro the Koreans they throttle already at 57% and then it goes kind of slow and then it goes even slower and also if you look at the, the C rating for those batteries which does not have too sophisticated um, BMS um, it doesn't heat up the battery like like uh, Tesla does early model 3 uh, I believe that that's the one that allows it to get so good speed because you see now we are at 56% and we are getting over 1C I believe that the battery should be around well, actually, I, I could probably Google this, but my guess is that it's um, it's close to 60 kilowatt hours, around 60 kilowatt hours, yeah. So it's still charging at, you see, a 1C, over 1C at 60%. So um, not many, not many uh, other uh, uh, batteries can do that, except for, of course, um, uh, the Taycan and... Uh, 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 what is it? But the thirsty one again, uh, Etron. Yes, Etron. Oh, how could I forget? Oh. But you see that now that um, uh, 16 minutes have passed, and we have charged to. Uh, we added 200 kilometers of range. So you know, uh, for most people, you want to charge to. I mean, if you were in a rush, like when I did the 1,000 kilometer challenge, then I usually charge for only 15 to 20 minutes each charging session and then I just I had to charge more often so it was a little bit stressful because you know I didn't get too long charging break and I had to stop every 100 to 140 kilometers roughly depends on how I want to time it because there's always this balance um, between you know trying to cut down the charging uh, the number of charging stops but also you see now that if you want to stretch it it goes kind of it goes pretty slow you know 52 kilowatt versus 150 if you ride on the low wave you know it's it's way faster yes but then again if if you use ionity uh, as of today you pay per session then i guess you still you want to charge to let's say 80 percent or whatever you know and then leap uh, between the charging stations um so it depends. But if you supercharge it, then of course you pay per, pay per kilowatt hour or minute, then you don't care how much, and then you can you can just leap. Um, and you see that um, if you want to charge longer, uh, let's say 20, yeah, 20, 25 minutes or half an hour, 
then you don't really get that much range. It's it go. I mean, it's pretty slow now, naturally because the battery is not that big, you know. Um, by the way, based on the nominal remaining and to charge to charge complete is based on this the set uh, charge level, which is set to ninety percent. So if you do the math there. It should be almost 50 kilowatt hours and then minus the energy buffer then I've worked out that it's 47.5 kilowatt hour from 100% to zero so I used that one 47.5 kilowatt hours when I did um, the 1000 kilometer challenge to calculate range and it was spot on yes uh, so you know 47 47 and a half kilowatt hours is, is not that much when you compare it to let's say the the Koreans they have 64 kilowatt hour available or yeah well yeah and then of course some cars they have less like uh, the MG said this EV and stuff but okay you see here after half an hour I mean um, the thing is that if you have a half an hour food break then it, it's kind of a waste of time you know for, for the car yes um, so this is where uh, the difference between a, a long range and a standard range plus comes is that uh, even the long range if you have a half an hour break you will have almost 500 kilometers of range versus 300 kilometers of range here uh, but what I found out is that the standard range plus can travel very fast if you ride on the on the let's say the um, uh, well I was about to say 100 kilowatt way but um, at least you know leave when you charge slower than uh, 60 kilowatt roughly you know or 70 kilowatt yeah um, then you can travel really fast um, almost as fast as a long range you know the only difference is that you have to charge more often so whereas the long range can leap uh, about 200 to 250 kilometers between each charge then the standard range plus is left with about half of that yeah because of, because simply because it charges kind of slow but overall you know I'm quite uh, impressed and surprised of how well it did it so uh, you also have to keep in mind that this is, you know, the, the lowest tier in uh, Model 3. So naturally, you, there, there are some like restrictions, limitations, but it actually beats other cars in the same price range by far yeah, when it comes to travel speed. So if travel speed is important for you, then go for a standard range plus if you want buttons if you uh, want more premium feel if you don't like the big screen if you're allergic to tesla you know if you need more space you need a, a hatch opening uh, then you should get um, e nero e soul or the leaf or whatever you know but you know i'm not gonna tell you that you know too many people ask me hey bjorn which car should i get I'm like, what, what, how should I know, you know, what, it's like if some dude, um, well, this ne never happened for, you know, I don't know why people don't uh, ask me, hey Bjorn, you know, I'm, I have to choose between, um, I'm, I, I want to date two girls, uh, it's, it's a black girl and a white girl, you know, it's a blonde or the black, you know, which one, you know, they are both pretty hot, and I can't decide. I'm like, dude, it depends on your taste, you know? Yeah, I would just take both of them. <laughs> no, but so the same goes for cars, you know? Uh, when people ask me, you know, I, I can't tell. And I, I don't want to be an advisor and, and tell you which car to, uh, to go for. So you have to know your needs and then you should watch my videos because I've made extensive videos about stuff, you know? You can put two and two together when you look at the banana box test. The banana box, you know, you see, the banana box test is about space and then the 1000 kilometer challenge is about traveling speed it's it's a combination it's not like a full stack test you know uh charging speed range uh yeah and charging network combined whereas the range test is a pure range test so of course if you uh, don't drive that far if you don't fast charge then range is more important than charging speed you know or whatever yeah so so you can almost you know take all those uh, tests i have done individually and um, kind of uh, make up your mind you know based on that but of course i can see that it's hard because it would be, be easier for me i mean if easier for you if you came to me and said okay you know i i, I have these needs you know 
uh, and then which one should I go for? I said, I just go for the blonde girl. Yeah, you want someone who wants to listen to you. Yeah, and and you you like big boobs, you know, then go for the blonde girl. Yes, because the the black girl, she has big booty. Yes, <laughs> no, but, okay, I, I would just stop there. But okay, anyway, 170 kilowatt on standard range plus kicks ass for the Lord. Yes, so I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. Thank you for watching and talk to you later.